Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Avengers Endgame and this is a spoiler review. If you want to see my spoiler free review then check out my other video, the link for that is in the description box below. But you know there's so much that happens in this movie that I just cannot wait to talk about. So you know this is your 5 second warning, this is a spoiler review of Avengers Endgame. If you haven't seen it I would recommend seeing my spoiler free review but if you are willing to hear you know my thoughts of this movie with spoilers included then please stick around as I will be talking about all of the main events in Avengers Endgame. So the storyline setup of this film was just done so well. I just loved how they, you know, kind of had three acts in this film and they were all really distinct and all just really, really cool in their own right. So, you know, we obviously have the first act where we're just kind of build up and talking about what this new world is like post Thanos' Infinity Snap and you know how all of these characters are just feeling hopeless and how they're all trying to you know readjust and kind of get on with their lives but equally still trying to undo the snap and bring everyone back so you know the, the development in that area was done really really well and actually I feel like a lot of people criticize the first act for just you know being too long and kind of just being really character driven and not really having much you know exciting stuff happen but I actually really really enjoyed that I feel like you know we've invested so much time in these characters and to kind of explore how they're kind of, you know, how they're all individually just trying to readjust to this world, I thought was just done really, really well. Then we had the time travel bit, and that was just done so brilliantly. I loved, you know, the Captain America sequences in the time traveling were just done so well. So, you know, his elevator scene where you thought he might do a reenactment of what happened in Winter Soldier, but actually he just did that epic Hail Hydra line. That was just so good. Then when he comes out of the elevator and he has the battle with himself in the past and he kind of has those hilarious lines like, I could do this all day. So, you know, that scene was just done really, really well. So all of the Captain America stuff was just really, really cool. And then the Loki twist was just really unexpected and so true to his character because, you know, in Thor 2 and Thor 3 and even in, you know, Infinity War, his character was kind of different. He was still mischievous and still the Loki that, you know, we all kind of know, but he was just, like Nebula, was just kind of more on the good side. And this movie just really showed the classic Loki. And I think that was just really, really cool. Obviously when he disappeared with the Infinity Stone, you're not really sure what he's doing, where he's gone. And I think that's purposefully done because that's going to be continued in his TV series. So, you know, all of the Loki time travel stuff is really, really cool. And then the Thanos stuff was just so awesome. How he was able to use, you know, past Nebula to kind of see what future Nebula can see and how, you know, he was going to use the time travelling to his advantage. And I feel like, you know, obviously they killed the um, future Thanos at the start of the movie and then to show like an older, more menacing Thanos just really, really showcased what an evil villain this guy is and how, you know, big of a threat he is and how, you know, the Avengers don't know, but the audience do know. So that, you know, device was just really, really clever in how they kind of did the storytelling in this movie. And yeah, overall, I just felt like this movie was just, the storytelling was just absolutely epic. And then obviously we had the final act with the whole massive battle with everyone. And that was really, really cool. I was really, really gutted that, you know, some of the characters weren't there. So obviously Vision wasn't there and, you know, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow wasn't there. That scene, by the way, where, where you know, Hawkeye and Black Widow were just trying to both sacrifice themselves, that was just so, you know, edge of your seat gripping. And the fact that they killed off Black Widow, that was just, you know, so unexpected. So, you know, heart-wrenching. And I just found it really, really sad because her character is just, you know, such an ambassador for the Avengers and you know, it was just so pivotal and just like fitted in really, really well. So the fact that she wasn't there for the final battle sequence and, you know, the all-female scene where they were all kind of showcasing, you know, the, the women of the Avengers, you know, just really, really sad that she wasn't there, but, you know. And also the fact that, you know, Gamora, so the two, so Gamora and, you know, Black Widow were the two characters that kind of got sacrificed for the Soul Stone. And it's just a real shame that, you know, the Gamora that we knew from, you know, the last few films isn't the Gamora that we're likely to see going forward is going to be the past Gamora that's in this new time frame. So that's just, you know, yeah, sad and interesting potential about what they're going to do as well. And then the final thing I wanted to say in terms of storytelling with the time travel aspect actually, 
is that it's really interesting what they've done in that, you know, with time travel, how we've seen it in other movies, such as Back to the Future, which they obviously made fun of a little bit in this film, where, you know, if you do go to the past, it won't necessarily change your present, because going into the past will start a new timeline. So what you have to do, which is what they did do in this film, is to go into the past, grab the Infinity Stones, bring it back to this present, sort out this timeline, and then go back, put the Infinity Stones back, and then, you know, kind of allow the past to kind of carry on as it should do. So I just feel like it was just really, really clever, just how they, how they used the whole time frame and timeline and time travel you know, aspect in a way that we haven't really seen it being done before, but in a way which does kind of make sense. So yeah, I just feel like, you know, from a storytelling point of view, this film just did it really, really well. So now let's talk about the different characters in this film and the different journeys that they go on throughout the movie and kind of what happens to them by the end of it. So like I said, Captain America went on an awesome journey in this movie. Kind of, he really is the pinnacle of, you know, doing the right thing and really, you know, believing that all of the different Avenger characters should come back that kind of had the misfortune of being a victim of Thanos' finger snap. So it's really nice to kind of see the classic Captain America in the beginning kind of wanting everyone back and just being really headstrong on this mission. He does obviously feel a bit hopeless by, you know, everything that happened, but it's really nice to kind of see him and Black Widow, can, they always have a great duo, don't they? Kind of wanting this to be sorted out. And I just found his sequences with the time traveling just so awesome. Just like the fight sequence with himself and the elevator scene. And when he held Thor's hammer, that was just so good. Kid you not, and I'm sure this happened to you guys that went into the cinema as well, just the uproar and the cheering that, you know, the first time where he is holding Thor's hammer and then he's yielding it, and yeah, that was just really, really cool. I feel like they overused the device a little bit. I feel like he had Thor's hammer in, in so many scenes, and he even had it when he kind of went back to do the Infinity Stone stuff. So I feel like they overused it a little bit, but never mind. It was, you know, it was an epic and awesome moment and really goes to show how he is worthy and is such a noble character. In terms of, you know, how they end his kind of time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'm a bit too minded about it. From a cinematic point of view, I feel like, you know, they closed his story arc really nicely. He kind of went back to the past into his specific time and kind of had the happy ending and got to live the life with his one true love, Peggy Carter. But I just feel like, and you know, that was great from, you know, a cinematic point of view, but I just feel like, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it was fitting to his actual character because, you know, throughout the, the last two Captain America movies in particular, Winter Soldier and Civil War, he's just done so much to kind of be back with his best friend Bucky and kind of sacrifice so much for him and sacrifice so many friendships for him and sacrifice sometimes what he felt was right as well for this character and you know his whole character base in the comics is a guy from the past from a completely different time that's living in the present and is kind of you know readjusting to that and is striving to have like a good story with his present time. And I feel like, especially with Peggy Carter as well, you know, she got married, she had her goodbye with Captain America in another previous film, and, and obviously, you know, it would have been nice to see Chris Evans and Steve Rogers and Captain America just continue and have more movies, but obviously they had to close it in a certain way, and it was a fitting end of that chapter for his character, but yeah, I just found it a bit sad that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't true to his comic book character and everything that they kind of, made his character do in the other films and obviously it was nice to kind of see the passing of the torch to Falcon's character but yeah I don't know I was just I just felt a little bit bittersweet with how they ended Captain America in this movie. So Iron Man similarly to Captain America went on a brilliant character arc and journey in this film you know he started the film kind of lost in space and then kind of came back down to earth and then the rivalry between him and you know Chris Evans Steve Rogers was just excellent they kind of really continued the last time that they kind of saw each other at the end of Civil War where they just went into an all-out battle with each other and it was just really nice to kind of have that consistency and to kind of genuinely see how they develop their friendship and relationship back to a level which is kind of how it used to be where they're kind of teammates 
And I feel like, you know, it was really nice that they kind of continued the fact that he is an awesome scientist and he is a great, he has a great mind and actually his mind is the thing that really saves the day in terms of using the quantum realm to kind of go back and do time travel properly. Whereas obviously Bruce Banner had those hilarious scenes where he was kind of not able to do it properly with Paul Rudd's character. So, you know, it was really, really cool to kind of see the journey that Iron Man went on. And actually, it was also really nice how they really played it cinematically in the sense of at the start of the movie, you know, when he's back down to Earth, sorry, after the five year mark, he is actually having the most normal life out of everyone. So everyone who survived, obviously there's some characters that got disintegrated and those that survived kind of are kind of lost. And he is a bit lost as well in the sense of, you know, he's really missing, you know, the world that he had and kind of his relationship with Peter Parker and, you know, everything. But that said, in terms of normality, he's, you know, he's married and he has a kid. So actually he's, he's quite content and quite settled. And when, you know, they go to him in the first instance, he's like, actually, look guys, I'm kind of happy now and I don't really want to risk losing that. So he definitely had the most to lose. And I feel like that's what made his sacrifice all the more you know monumental and all the more kind of fitting to his character because you know at the start of him in 2008 in the first Iron Man movie and kind of throughout as well he's this very arrogant kind of the character that you love to hate in, a, in the sense of you know he's just so self-absorbed so self-obsessed and only really cares about himself but gradually throughout the films you know, especially in um, in Civil War as well he really feels like what he's done and what they've done as a team really needs to be more based on the you know the wider community and everyone else so it was really nice to kind of see that side of his character kind of come back and he does kind of make the ultimate sacrifice isn't it he's some he's someone that had everything and he sacrificed it for everyone else so you know his finger snap was just so epic and you know the line that he had there which was you know his final line to thanos which is i am iron man which is, you know, a nice throwback to what he said at the end of Iron Man, the first movie. So I feel like, you know, they'd done his character justice in how they treated him. And I feel like he definitely had a real fitting end. You know, that final funeral scene was just absolutely, you know, epic. But having all these awesome actors, just from like an acting point of view, having one of those actors there for for that final shot was just absolutely awesome. It was a definitely, it was definitely a fitting tribute. Obviously it's really sad because Robert Downey Jr. just did that character, Tony Stark, just justice to so, to like some next level. He just played him so brilliantly and there's all those comments, isn't it, when you kind of see Robert Downey Jr. in interviews that, you know, he is Tony Stark, where does Tony Stark finish, where does Robert Downey Jr. start and kind of they are, you know, just one and the same in terms of how they think and approach stuff. So it's just really, really sad. But that said, I feel like his ending was just a real nice fitting tribute to his character. And just, yeah, it was really, really sad as well. The scenes with um, how he's thinking back about Peter Parker and Spider-Man and how they have their final goodbye. So that was really, really moving. And I feel like, you know, the way that Happy was referencing the, the burgers <laughs> with his daughter. So yeah, they just had really nice emotional throwbacks to that character and I just feel like yeah it's a real shame I mean we might see him again in the future they might do some kind of thing with time travel or, or something like that but I also feel like he also touched so many different characters in terms of how he imparted advice so you know with Spider-Man as well you know he he just had he taught him so much and he definitely was his protege and it's just going to be really interesting kind of seeing what they do with the Spider-Man Peter, Peter Parker character going forwards because you know, they had just had such a close bond and relationship and he kind of was his mentor. And obviously Happy is going to kind of try to take that place. But, you know, Happy is not a superhero like Tony Stark and Iron Man were. So I feel like, yeah, he's he's obviously, you know, the ripple effect of his impact to different characters. He's probably going to be carried through in different movies. But yeah, while it was really, really fitting, I think it was really, really sad that they, they've kind of put that character to rest. But, you know, he, he did start the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe experience and kind of was right to end it. So whilst it is really sad, I feel like they just, you know, they gave a massive nice tribute and kind of final scene and farewell to that character. So the way that they handled Thor in this movie, I don't know. I feel like, you know, the whole fat Thor stuff was funny in the beginning, but then they just kind of ran with that joke just 
way too much and I think by the end of it it was just, I don't know, it was kind of, you know when it's one of those things which is funny in the, in the first time you see it but then it just becomes like a stupid joke and then it's kind of, you don't know where the joke starts and ends and it's just, yeah, it was just, I feel like they just overdid it but, you know, they did kind of go back to classic Thor. I feel like, you know, Thor in this movie was definitely the Thor Ragnarok Thor in this movie but, you know, with the fight sequences it kind of went back to classic Thor from the first first two movies and the first few Avengers movies and I was really really happy about that. I feel like, you know, the Thor character has become more of a comedy character and that's fine because Chris Hemsworth is able to do comedy really really well but I really, I'm, I'm actually a bigger fan of the classic Thor from the, from the beginning of the Marvel Cinematic Universe era as opposed to kind of the Thor Ragnarok version of his character. I feel like he does do humour really really well but kind of when he becomes a bit of a parody of himself and he's not the epic Thor character that, you know, is a thunder god and is all of this really cool epicness. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't really fit or sit well with me. Especially when the Thor in the comic books is more of the classic Thor in the first few movies. So I'm really glad that they kind of went back to that with the Thanos fight because you kind of got to see the the Thor that should be the real Thor, if that makes sense. So yeah, and I'm really, really, really glad that he survived. You know, it's really, really cool that you can kind of see more, you were teased a bit with the relationship between Chris Pratt's um, Star-Lord and Chris Hemsworth's Thor because their scenes together in Infinity War were just absolutely hilarious when Chris Pratt's character was um, mocking Thor. That for me was just one of my favourite scenes from Infinity War and I really really hope that Thor or as Guardians of the Galaxy is kind of what we get to see in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 because I just feel like Thor will just fit in so well with those different characters and you know he already has a good relationship with Rocket the Raccoon and he's got that amazing hilarious um, relationship with you know Star-Lord and he even has a bit of a relationship with Groot doesn't he because Groot was able to help him make Stormbreaker so I feel like he's going to be able to sit really really well with the rest of those team members. I know there was talk of maybe a Thor 4 movie and that you know it might explore what happens with Valkyrie and kind of are they going to go back to Asgard, who kind of knows what's going to happen with that and if they do do a Thor 4 movie that would be great but I really really want to see more of him with the Guardians of the Galaxy and I, don't, I wonder if he's also going to be a part of the Loki TV series. Obviously we don't know what's going to happen with that arc, is that going to be a different timeline, is that going to kind of be part of this timeline, we're not sure but um, yeah I'm really really glad that we're going to be able to see more of the character of Thor going forward. So Black Widow for me was just like the saddest moment in this entire movie. I think, I think you know, with Iron Man and Captain America and possibly Thor, we were kind of expecting the fact that, you know, their stories are going to close and they're going to kind of have their time ended with Endgame. <laughs> but with Scarlett Johansson's character, there was no real prediction around, you know, when everyone was talking about Endgame that her character will not survive Endgame. Like, that was just such a shocking moment. And you know, credit to all of the producers and everyone behind the scenes in terms of managing to keep that a secret because that was just so unexpected and kind of when it happened, I don't know, I just thought that maybe Hawkeye would use the soul stone to kind of bring her back or that, you know, I felt like when you saw her, kind of when the camera was panning out and you saw her just lying down, like lying down, just lying there, um, I don't know, I just felt like this, this surely can't be the end and obviously I think because we know that there's going to be a Black Widow movie coming out, even though we all know it's going to be a prequel, there was just there was just no thought of anything happening to her character but you know in terms of what did happen to her character it was just really really sad and you know I still kind of hope that she can come back but it just seems so unlikely but I don't know, especially with her character because she was just such a fan of the Avengers and she was so close to Nick Fury who created this whole team and you know, her character really was the one that was kind of trying to keep the calm in the chaos, so to speak, in the whole post-Infinity War snap era. And yeah, it was just a real shame that she also wasn't in that final battle sequence with all the different other characters because, you know, she's such a great warrior, she's such a great, you know, Avengers team member, she kind of kept everyone kind of sane and she kind of had relationships with Iron Man because obviously she, her introduction to the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe was obviously in Iron Man 2 and then she kind of had a bit of a relationship with Captain America in Captain America 2 and then she kind of had a bit of a relationship with the Hulk in the Avengers 2 <laughs> so I feel like you know she was just such a 
pivotal character and was just and just rounded them all off really really well as well so so yeah it's just a real shame about what happened to Scarlett Johansson's character but you know it's really good that we are going to get a prequel but yeah it's just a real shame that there's no more Black Widow basically. Hawkeye was another great character in this movie he obviously started the movie right in the beginning with showing how he's really really happy and really content with his life and then suddenly you know we were expecting it but when you know the Infinity War snap happened he kind of lost everyone um, as, they, as his whole family got disintegrated and how you know his character then became Ronin and was kind of you know a bit of an anti-hero and just yeah just that kind of transformation of his character was just really understandable because you you know that he kind of hung up the whole superhero mantle because he kind of just wanted this normality and this family life and the fact that that just got taken from him just obviously is going to play on his mind and just yeah you can really understand what happened to his character and I feel like his story arc was really nice in terms of you know someone who had everything he lost everything he was a great team member throughout the film and then he was able to get everything back by the end of it as well so that was kind of kind of like the classic movie movie arc so I feel like you know that was really really like really nice to kind of see for his character and I feel like he was used in the film in a really good way in the sense of you know he had those really intense scenes with Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow character where they were both trying to sacrifice each other for the soul stone and then you know when past Thanos came back to present day and was trying to get the Infinity Gauntlet he was the one that was really protecting it so I feel like you know they used his character really really well and I feel like you know years and years and years ago everyone was kind of using you know that character as a bit of a joke just to say you know the other characters are much bigger and more impressive and you know Hawkeye's never going to get his own solo movie and Hawkeye's just going to be you know relegated to just being someone that's just you know brainwashed by Loki and you know it's really nice and really satisfying I think to kind of give him the respect that he deserves because obviously he wasn't in Infinity War either so those people were just like discrediting and just kind of forgetting about his character but you know he was one of the core six and one of the founding members in the movie anyway uh, not in the comic books but anyway <laughs> so um so yeah it was really really nice to kind of see you know his character have a have a fitting end and kind of have a nice story arc throughout the movie and also kind of setting up what is going to be the new future Hawkeye TV series so I just feel like it's really nice to actually kind of see you know from the beginning right in the beginning of the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe starting people were a bit unsure about his character but by the end of it he was really well respected and a real kind of team member and really earned his place so yeah that was really really nice to see in terms of Hawkeye. I'll go through the rest of the characters a bit more quicker so the Hulk that was really really nice to kind of see his character arc in the in the two movies as well because you know, Bruce Banner was kind of seen as a bit of a weakling in, you know, Thor Ragnarok and especially in Infinity War because he just couldn't channel his inner Hulk. But it was really nice to kind of see where his character was after the five years in the sense of, you know, he's finally been able to find the middle ground between Bruce Banner and the Hulk and he kind of became a bit of a celebrity figure within the world. So, yeah, it was really, really nice to kind of see what happened with his character and how the relationship that he had with the with the ancient one as well in terms of how he can kind of convince her to kind of give him the time stone because she was not going to be willing to at all and you know that whole device actually when they kind of went into the past and they were um, seeming like they could easily get the infinity stones but then they were all in their own various different challenges and yeah I feel like his one was just done really really well. So in terms of Loki, like I said before, I'm really glad what they did with his character in the sense of they kind of went back to a time where he was a lot more mischievous, he wasn't as nice as he was towards the final few movies that we saw him in and you know when he used the Infinity Stone to kind of zap away, that was just really really interesting and I feel like you know his cameo appearances in this film were really really cool because we saw him when Thor went back to the past to talk to his mum and you know those scenes are just awesome in and of themselves but yeah, I'm just really, really glad to kind of see that we have the classic Loki back. It's going to be really interesting what they do with the TV series because obviously in the current timeline, we didn't really see that Loki come back because obviously Thanos killed him at the start of Infinity War. So I wonder what they're going to do with the TV series. I'm guessing they're going to continue it with the Loki that used the Tesseract to kind of zap away somewhere. So I wonder what they're going to do with it. Maybe he might time travel to the present day. We don't know yet, but... Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with Loki. In terms of Falcon, you know, we didn't really see too much of his character. Obviously, only towards the end when Steve Rogers kind of passed the mantle 
onto him. That was really, really cool. And obviously that does happen in the in the comic books because old man Steve Rogers is a character for quite a long time actually and he does pass the shield onto Falcon. So I feel like whilst they did hold true to that storyline and kind of held true to what happens in the comics, like I said before, I'm just still a bit gutted that we won't see Steve Rogers as the Captain America that we've seen throughout these movies thus far. But you know, that might change. We might see him in the Falcon and Bucky Winter Soldier TV series. And on that point, let's talk about the Winter Soldier. So I feel like his character just went on an awesome journey from, you know, the Winter Soldier to Civil War to Infinity War to Endgame. Obviously, he wasn't that big of a character in Endgame at all. And, you know, they purposefully probably did that because they wanted to focus on other characters and he'll have his time to shine in the Falcon and Winter Soldier TV series. So that would be nice to kind of see what they do in terms of the continuation with that character. I did kind of think they were going to give him the the Captain America shield because Kevin Feige kind of teased that years and years ago. But you know, it's good that they kind of gave it to Falcon because that was more true to the comics. So I wonder if they're going to have like a rivalry or a competition in the TV series in terms of who gets that shield. They did call the TV series Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So, you know, if Falcon does become Captain America, then I wonder if they're going to change the name or, yeah, who knows what they're going to do with that. But, you know, those two characters weren't used that much in Endgame and understandably so, because firstly, they were both vaporized and secondly, they're both going to get their own TV series and thirdly, because they wanted to focus on the characters that probably aren't going to survive. So, you know, it was understandable, but yeah, really nice and exciting to see what the future holds for them too. So Paul Rudd's Ant-Man, in some ways you could say was the character that kind of saved the whole universe. You know, the quantum realm was the thing that allowed them to do all their time traveling and all of that sort of stuff. So I feel like, in some ways, Scott Lang really is the character that kind of saved the day in Endgame. And I feel like, yeah, his character was given a lot of attention and a lot of time and kind of, I'm really, really pleased actually, because his character is just so hilarious that, you know, they could have kind of kept him as a minor character, but it's really, really good that they kind of gave him the attention and the credit that his character deserves. Obviously, in the first time that ant -Man came out, I was a bit, you know, harsh on the fact that they didn't kind of go down the Hank Pym route, but I feel like, you know, Paul Rudd, Scott Lang have really earned their stripes in terms of kind of being such pivotal characters, and I feel like, you know, they just use the Scott Lang character for, so, for comedic purposes and just do it in such a hilarious way, like, you know, the scene with the tacos and the scene with the sandwich and just, yeah, just generally, you know, Scott Lang is such a hilarious character and I just feel like, um, yeah, he was just used really, really well in this movie and, and actually as a, as a team member, he's also really, really good because he obviously turned into giant man and was able to save the day a lot in this movie and, you know, the relationship with him and Evangeline Lily's Wasp character was really nice. They kind of continue that a little bit. So yeah, his character was just done brilliantly and, uh, and hopefully we'll get another Ant-Man and the Wasp movie where we can kind of see that character being continued to be used. But yeah, I'm just really, really pleased and really, really glad that they kind of gave him finally a big starring role in an Avengers movie. And obviously he wasn't there in Infinity War, so um, justifiably, understandably so, he was given a bigger role in this film and he just did it really, really well. Spider-Man was another really, really cool character. Obviously, he's kind of everyone's favourite character in terms of, you know, people that have grown up with watching the comic and TV series and all that kind of stuff. But obviously, he wasn't a massive, massive character in this film because he kind of obviously came into the third act with the, with the main battle sequence. But in some ways, his presence was felt throughout the film because, you know, Tony Stark and Iron Man's character would think about him and reference him and see his pictures and stuff. But, you know, when he kind of came back, he just kind of stole the show, didn't he? Because he was just so funny. He was, um, he was still in awe of everything, which was just so true to the character that we saw in Civil War. Um, and he was just really, really, you know, happy and kind of just was able to, you can really feel his joy and the fact that his kind of jaw is on the floor throughout the whole battle sequence. And he was just really, really helpful in terms of kind of getting the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, but then at the same time, I'm really glad that they also know that he is a teenager, so he was able to be, he's not like, you know, unstoppable. So that was really, really, you know, I'm glad that they didn't overpower his character, so to speak. And also, he finally got to use kill mode, which is something that was teased in the Spider-Man Homecoming movie. So, you know, from that point of view, I feel like the movie was able to reference loads of stuff that had happened in this, you know, massive 11 years, 22 movie 
back catalogue because they're just able to like pull out loads of different moments that have happened in the past film so that was really really cool with, with what they referenced with the Spider-Man character. And then we have Doctor Strange so his character similarly to Ant-Man was really pivotal as well because you know he kind of saw millions of different outcomes of the Infinity War snap and almost all of them had the Avengers losing and he just saw the one timeline that they were able to survive and he was kind of trying to do all that he could to kind of get towards that outcome and you know that self-belief is a thing that allowed Bruce Banner to convince the Ancient One to give him the Time Stone in the first place so you know I feel like his character was really pivotal in the sense of you know he could see the future but you know in terms of this movie he wasn't really used too much but you know I'm sure he will come back in Doctor Strange 2 which is a sequel that I'm sure will happen soon so yeah his character and obviously his character I feel from my point of view kind of has the best superpowers because he can kind of use magic and sorcery and kind of did use it in this movie in terms of kind of having the transportation device to kind of bring everyone here so yeah his character was really really well used in this movie as well and next we have Captain Marvel and similarly to Spider-Man I'm really glad that she didn't just come in there and kind of overshadow and overpower everyone else and just easily you know destroy Thanos and kind of just save the day you know her character is powerful and was able to like destroy Thanos's ship and was able to kind of bring Iron Man back but I'm really glad that they didn't kind of use her as a character that's just gonna just you know easily able to fix everything with with one simple snap or anything like that so yeah I'm really glad that because there was a lot of worry wasn't there especially after we saw the first Captain Marvel origin movie that you know she's too powerful and she's just gonna able to just like save the day really really easily so I'm really glad that they didn't go down that road and that her character was kind of was was there in the right amounts that she should have been there so yeah I feel like they handled Captain Marvel really really well we also have Scarlet Witch which is really interesting actually because she did overpower Thanos quite well didn't she and I feel like her character is incredibly powerful and is a massive character in the comic books as well so I'm glad that we're going to be able to see more from her character in the TV series Vision is a character that I'm really gutted wasn't in this film Again, understandably so because, you know, his whole, you know, powers and everything kind of came from the Mind Stone and when, you know, Thanos brutally took out the Mind Stone from his brain and kind of left him as a grey robot, you know, understandably you, you won't kind of see Vision again. But yeah, I don't know, it was just a real shame that because actually his character, again, is another one that's a big character in the comic book movies. So yeah, it's a shame that that happened, but I hope that, you know, they can do something to kind of bring him back because his character is so important and his character will be in a TV series with Scarlet Witch even though that might be in the 1950s in terms of where it's set but you know I'm not sure what's going to happen with that but you know that relationship is has been a really interesting one throughout the movies and you can really feel Scarlet Witch's pain I feel like you know the actress just does it so well because you could feel it when she lost Quicksilver in Avengers Age of Ultron and then you could feel it again here in terms of her rage towards Thanos for destroying her life so to speak so yeah I feel like you know overall all of these characters have just done such a great job then we have the Guardians of the Galaxy so obviously Rocket the Raccoon was one that you know survived the snap and was just hilarious as ever in this movie the rest of them all got disintegrated actually so you know you didn't really see too much of them in um in this endgame film but you know what you do see they were great in the final battle and in the little setup for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 so I hope that we're going to see more from you know Thor with the Guardians of the Galaxy that would be really really cool but Nebula and Gamora kind of were very very pivotal so you know obviously the, the Gamora that we've, that we've seen throughout the movies thus far got killed in Infinity War so that version of the character is obviously not alive anymore but we saw a past Gamora and that Gamora is probably going to be the one that will be in Guns of the Galaxy 3 and we can maybe see a, you know, chemistry building up again for Star and her character and that would be really interesting actually because, you know, in this film they did tease that she wasn't really that interested in him but, you know, what is Star Lord going to think of that and is how is he going to kind of win her back so that's going to be really interesting but Nebula was such a pivotal character in this movie as well, wasn't she? Because she is the one that kind of brought past Thanos into this world and was, you know, the, the twist of, 
you know, the evil Nebula going back to the present day with the rest of the team and kind of being the being the villain within that little space, but the other rest of the heroes don't know that. But as the viewer, we do know that. So that whole device was just used really, really well. And I feel like, you know, that was not only done really, really well, but you could kind of really feel the uh, impact of when, you know, Hulk did the snap and kind of brought everyone back. It was kind of like a happy, happy moment where they could have kind of ended the movie there but then kind of a nebula brought Thanos from another past world into this world and because of that you know everything just went pear-shaped so you know her character was just so pivotal and I said in the Guardians of the Galaxy review that you can also check out that you know her and Gamora are really close to Thanos and I'm really glad that they kind of had that consistency in this movie and that that relationship was really pivotal in this movie as well. So yeah, I feel like Nebula and Gamora were just used really well in this film as well. It's a shame that we didn't get to see more of the Black Panther characters. We didn't get to see Chadwick Boseman that much in this movie. We didn't get to see his sister. We didn't get to see, you know, all of his support team, even though one of them did survive. So it's just a real shame that, you know, they, those characters weren't used more in this movie. But, you know, we are going to be getting a sequel of the Black Panther very soon. So, you know, that's when we can kind of see more from them. Nick Fury as well, obviously we, you know, his character kind of set up all of these Avengers teams and yeah, even though he was, you know, snapped away at the end of Infinity War, it would have been nice to have seen more from his character, but, you know, it was nice that he was at the funeral scene, so, you know, I, I guess that's something. And obviously he will be a bigger part of the Spider-Man Far From Home movie based on the trailers that we've seen as well. The character, the other character that was there, which was really nice that they kind of brought back for the, um, Tony Stark funeral tribute was the kid from Iron Man 3 so it was really nice to kind of see his character there and I wonder if his character is going to maybe take on the Iron Man mantle we're not sure but that would be interesting or if War Machine will kind of continue as War Machine or if he will kind of be Iron Patriot if he will be Iron Man or you know that would be an interesting one War Machine was a great character in this film as well and it was nice to kind of see him there again I would have wanted to see more from him but you know, um, yeah, he was just kind of there, he was with Nebula and kind of was a support character there. So hopefully in the future maybe we can see a bit more from him. But yeah, he did a, he did a great job in this movie as well. So those are all of the Avengers characters, but then we had all of the supporting characters as well. So then we had Jane Foster, we had Peggy Carter, we had the Ancient One, we had the Hydra crew, we had Iron Man's dad, we had Thor's mum, we had young Hank Pym, we had the Wasp, we had, you know, all of these classic characters were in this film and it was really nice actually because you know the film knows all of the investment that the viewer has had in the 21 preceding movies throughout the 11 years and they were able to like reference and pull all the different material from this like back catalogue of amazing work and were just able to throw it into this film and not in a way that it's overly cluttered or disjointed or incoherent it just worked so well and was just yeah just a beautiful love letter to you know all the fans and to all these different characters and all of the different storylines and everything that they've just set up throughout the you know years and years and years in the marvel cinematic universe obviously the next film will be spider-man far from home which will be as kevin Feige said the final movie in the marvel cinematic universe phase three sequence of films so that would be great to see in a couple of months time and then we will be in phase four which will be absolutely awesome i cannot wait to see what phase four is going to hold it's a real shame that we won't see certain characters in phase four so you know we won't be seeing captain america iron man along with the likes of you know reed richards or dr doom and wolverine and the x-men so you know those moments would have been great and it would have been great if the fox and disney merger had happened before but you know that should have take away from what we have seen over the last, you know, 22 films. So, you know, I just feel like Avengers Endgame is just such an epic, perfect, monumental, fitting conclusion to all of the other movies that we've seen coming out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I just feel like, yeah, it truly does get a 10 out of 10 in my mind. And, you know, it's just a movie unlike any other. So, yeah, I just feel like it was a perfect film. And if you want to see my spoiler-free review, then check out the link in the description box below. Otherwise, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys to talk about the next Marvel Cinematic Universe movie.